Good morning and welcome to Grace United Methodist Church. We're so glad that you have chosen today to worship with us this morning. Before we begin our time of worship, I want to give you a few announcements. I want you to register your attendance. So important for us as we are trying to track who's in worship and who we are missing so that we can reach out to them. Um, take a minute to fill out the form that's attached there um, and tell us that you were here in worship with everybody that is present with you this morning. Today we're continuing in our sermon series called Real Faith, in which we're looking at movies and what they teach us to, uh, about the faith. Uh, tonight at the drive-in here at the church, we'll be showing Sing. Uh, come about 8.30 uh, is when the movie will start. Come a little bit earlier than that, get parked and get your snacks out uh, and enjoy a time together as a family in a safe environment. Uh, you'll be able to just tune your radio and listen to, the, to uh, this great movie called Sing. I want to thank everyone who participated in our outreach ministry to the women at the Lane Murray unit in Gatesville. We collected 44 bottles of shampoo, 86 bars of soap, 29 deodorants, and 51 tubes of toothpaste, 210 items collected and delivered to the chaplain there, uh, who was very, very grateful. Over 1,400 women in that prison unit. Uh, thank you for helping us reach them with the love of Christ in some very simple ways. Um, and Jesus reminds us that when we reach out to those in prison we are reaching out to him so thank you for being a part of that and thank you for being a church who responds to those in need again our team is continuing to meet as we prepare for uh, in-person worship we will uh, be uh, surveying you and asking some questions as we make plans uh, we are excited about what the future is going to hold for us and so you'll be getting some uh, information soon about when we are planning to do that and reopen to our in-person worship we will continue to have digital presence the entire time so uh, whether you come to in person or whether you watch online we will still be present there Call on Lego builders, old and young, create and build something out of Legos for me. Take a photo or a video and send it to me. Um, my email address uh, is there on the screen. Um, it's a new sermon series I'm going to start at the end of June. So if you'll do that, I would love to see the kinds of creations that you can come up with using Legos. Um, thanks so much for being here with us this morning. And now let's enter into a time of worship together. Please join me in the call to worship. We are gathered to worship together, full of the joy we feel about God's love for us. He who loved us first has called us to love and care for one another. With God's help, we can overcome hatred and anger. We seek God and ask for guidance, knowing that we can love because of His grace transform our hearts and make us more loving so that God's love is evident in every part of our life.
Sunday. Thank you for joining me for Children's Time. I'm Miss Jody. Today we're going to continue our sermon series called Real Faith, R-E-E-L. And the movie we're going to talk about today is Sing. If you've not seen this movie, you should. It's pretty awesome. Well, first, I want to talk about our scripture. Our scripture today comes out of 1 John, and it's in the New Testament. And what it tells us is the only reason that we know how to love is because God loved us first. I want you to let that sink in for a second. The only reason we know how to love is because God loved us first. How awesome is that? That is pretty cool, right? Well, I also want to kind of talk about loving other people is not always easy. People are different than us. They like different things that, that we don't like. So sometimes it's kind of hard. Well, in this movie Sing, there's a bunch of different animals coming together for a singing competition. There's a pig that dances kind of silly. There's a mom pig who is kind of shy in her singing. There's an elephant who's not sure about her singing, but she sings really, really good. And a gorilla who I think he kind of likes like the more jazzy kind of music. Well, they all like different things and they all come from different walks of life. Um, but they all kind of come together because they all like to sing. So they all learn to love each other that even though we're all different and we like different things that we can all love each other. So I want you to remember that when you see the movie that even though we come from different walks of life and we don't like the same things and we can't always be nice or they can't always be nice that we should still love people, right? And the only way we know how to love is because God loved us first. How awesome is that? God loves you. Like he always will and he always has. So let's say a quick prayer together. Okay, you ready? Close your eyes. Dear God, thank you for teaching me how to love. I'm so happy you loved me first. Amen. Amen, guys. Thank you. Bye. See you next week. The church appreciates your continued financial support during this time. There are several ways for you to give. You can mail a check to the church. You can go to the church website and click on the giving tab. Or you can send a message, give, to 254-781-3643. Or you can give through a direct debit from your checking account. Please join me in our offertory prayer. From the prayer of St. Francis, Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. And where there is sadness, joy. Lord, our hearts are heavy these days, our spirits broken. Please open our eyes and our hearts to see and hear where we can be your hands and feet. Help us to see every person as you see them, for we are all equal in your sight. If your heart is broken, let ours be broken also. Don't allow us to merely say that we love one another. Teach us to put that love into practice each day. Amen. Please join me in our profession of faith. We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus, the word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen, our judge and our hope, in life, in death, in life beyond death. God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Amen.
we pray together. Most gracious and holy God, we come before you this day, thankful for your presence, thankful for the ways you are at work in our lives, grateful for the ways we experience your grace and your mercy and your love. And Lord, as we come today, we come, God, as people searching for your guidance, for your grace, searching for your answers to the questions of our lives. And Lord, we come humbly before you because we know each and every one of us is a sinner in need of grace. All of us have made choices that we wish we hadn't. All of us have said and done things that were not representative of who you are in our lives, God. So we come seeking your grace and your forgiveness. So I invite you now just to offer those um, requests before God for forgiveness of your sins and ask that God might touch your heart and change you, that you might become a deeper, more committed follower of Christ. Dear God, we thank you that there is always more of your grace than there is of our sins. Thank you that you never give up on us. Thank you that you love us in spite of ourselves so many times. Help us, God, to walk more closely with you. Help us to follow you more faithfully. And Lord, as we come before you today, we come to lift others into your presence. Those that we know who are facing difficult challenges, those who grieve this day, those who are dealing with the issues um, around um, their jobs, those who are facing financial hardships, those who are making difficult decisions. And Lord, we lift all of them before you. We also, God, lift our country to you. We pray for um, systemic change to happen. And we pray, Lord, that each of us might be a part of bringing about your kingdom on earth, where all people are valued, all people have worth. We thank you, Lord, for the opportunities we have to speak a word of truth into this world. Help us speak it on your behalf, God. We pray for all of them, Lord, that your healing would be upon each and every situation, each and every person. We lift them before you, God. And Lord, we come before you today as your people, seeking what you would have for us this day, the word that you have prepared for us. Open our hearts, our eyes, and our ears, God, to help us hear and see you all around us all the time. Lord, we give you thanks for all that you are doing in our lives. We thank you for the small ways we see you appear. We thank you, God, for the ways that you show up in the most dramatic and Lord, help us to have eyes to see you all around us all the time. And now, God, we come to give you ourselves, our hearts and our lives, and we invite you, God. Might you work in us and among us. Help us to be your people and your representatives in the world. And we ask all of this in the name of Jesus the Christ, the one who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
scripture for this morning comes out of the book of 1 John, the fourth chapter, verses 16 through 19. As we prepare to hear from God's holy word, will you pray with me? Gracious and holy God, we love you. And we are so glad to be in your presence. We pray, God, that you would speak to us. Open the scriptures that we might receive your word for our lives. God, whatever you do, do not leave us the same as we were when we started. God, we thank you for this time to gather together. And Lord, I pray, either through me or in spite of me, God, that you might speak your word to your people. We ask in the name of Christ our Savior. So we continue in our sermon series called Real Faith. And this morning we're going to look at a movie called Sing. We're going to look at the faith lessons that we learned from that special little movie. Uh, we've been having lots of troubles with movie clips. So um, if you haven't gotten to see the movie, we want to encourage you to go on YouTube and watch the trailer and then come tonight to the drive-in at 830 at church and you can see the whole film. If you, uh, it's a great movie. And what I want to do is introduce you to one of the main characters in the film, uh, a girl named Mina. She is a teenage elephant, and in this movie, Mina has a gift. I mean, an incredible gift. Mina can sing. She has an amazing voice. When she sings, people stop and they listen. When she starts singing, you better have a box of Kleenex nearby because she is awesome. She has an incredible gift. The only problem or dilemma with our teenage elephant Mina is that she has this gift but hardly anyone has ever experienced it. She can sing like no one else but she doesn't let others inside her. She doesn't let that gift come out. She's afraid to share her gift. She's afraid to sing. So her gift stays locked up inside of her until she meets Buster Moon. He is an optimistic, entrepreneurial, red bow tie wearing koala bear. And Buster has a gift too. His gift is finding other people's gifts and unlocking them. And by the time the movie's over, Buster has helped several people. He's helped an angst-filled gorilla headed down the wrong path. He's helped a housewife pig who has 25 kids, uh, a punk rock porcupine, and a teenage elephant. He's helped all of them unlock these great potential gifts inside of them. He's helped them pursue their dreams. He's helped them become all that God wants them to be. Now let me give you a little history of the movie. Here's what happens. Buster uh, owns a theater, and the theater's been in financial troubles for quite some time, and he's just trying to keep it open. And he'll do just about anything it takes to make it happen. So he decides he's going to hold a singing competition. And he believes if the talent is good enough that people will come to the theater to see the show and um, it will be, an, he'll get enough people there and sell enough tickets to save the theater. Now he offers a $1,000 prize, but there ends up being a typo on the flyer and the $1,000 prize gets advertised as a $100,000 prize. It's a big problem. Mina's family sees this flyer and convinces her that she should come and try out for the show. She should share her voice. This is her chance. This is her moment to share her gift with the world. Mina shows up. She steps out onto the stage, but she just can't do it. As the audience, you watch and you just want her to do it. You want her to make it. You want it to happen. And she tries as hard as she can. And the harder she tries, the worse it seems to happen. Uh, and the more you seem to be pulling for her. 
and she just simply freezes on the stage until finally someone has to come and literally push her off the stage. Our hearts sink for Mina and for her gift that won't be shared. She leaves dejected, and the elephant we were rooting for seems destined to not share her gift, her beautiful voice. Now, a little later in the movie, there is a moment where Buster Moon has heard Mina's beautiful voice, and he pulls her aside, and he says, girl, you gotta get out there. You have a gift that needs to be shared. Don't let your fear stop you from doing what you love. That's the most important advice he gives her. Don't let your fear stop you from doing what you love. Do you ever feel like that teenage elephant, Mina? Do you have something inside of you locked up because you're too afraid to share it? Do you have a dream, a dream that you'd love to pursue if you didn't allow fear to stop it? What about a truth about you, about who you are, what you've been through, that if you let others know it or see it, you're afraid they might just push you right off the stage? Do you ever feel like your voice just doesn't matter? Have you ever let fear keep you from doing what you love? I remember feeling like Mina. I was in fifth grade. I loved to sing. And when I was on, in elementary school, we got to go to music one day a week with Mrs. Peterson, and I loved that day at school. It was my favorite day every, uh, every week when we got to go to music class with Mrs. Peterson. I would go into that class and I would sing with all that I had within me. And I remember one day we were in class and Mrs. Peterson announced that there was going to be a special choir for all the fifth graders they wanted to try out. And you had to come that following Saturday and you had to try out to be in the special choir. So I went home and convinced my mom that I needed to try out for the choir. So she took me to the auditions that following Saturday. And there was a big long line of kids there. And I watched as each kid stepped up to the piano and sang the little song that Mrs. Peterson had taught all of us. I listened as she told some who sang higher, they were, should, should go sit in the yellow chairs. And then someone else would come up and they would have a, a lower ranged voice. And so she'd tell them to go sit in the green chairs. And then some who were just awful, she told them to go sit in the brown chairs. The longer I stood in the line, the more nervous I became. And finally it was my turn and I stepped up to the piano and I gave it all I had. And I was terrible. Mrs. Peterson even stopped me and gave me a chance to start over, but I didn't get any better. It was just loud and off key and not good at all. And I finished singing that little song and Mrs. Peterson said, you can go sit in the brown chairs. Now that moment had a huge impact on my life. For the next 10 years, I would not sing in front of anyone and I loved singing. I was too afraid to let my voice be heard. The only time I ever sang out loud was in the shower or in the car when I was by myself. I bet there's some of you who've been asked to do something that you love and you have offered a lame excuse about why you couldn't or you can't. And you would rather just sit in the brown chairs keeping your gift to yourself. But Buster Moon said, don't let fear keep you from doing what you love. But we do it all the time, don't we? So what is fear? Fear is a natural emotion. Fear has an evolutionary purpose in our lives. Fear has been given to us to protect us. Fear rises up in us when we feel threatened. It's meant to help us know when we are under attack. 
And there are plenty of things that I want my kids to be appropriately afraid of. You know, I have, we have a 10-year-old son and a 4-year-old daughter, and there are things I want them to be appropriately afraid of. I want them to be appropriately afraid of crossing a busy street full of lots of cars coming and going. I want them to be appropriately afraid of playing with fire. And I want them to be appropriately afraid of cheering for any football team besides Texas A&M. But there are also things that I don't want them to be afraid of. I don't want them to be afraid of trying something new. I don't want them to be afraid to fail. And I don't want them to be afraid that they might disappoint me if they did. And in this day and age, I don't want my children to be afraid of those who are different than them, those who look different, who come from different backgrounds or don't have the same kind of life that they do. There are appropriate and inappropriate fears in this life. And I want them to respect the ones that are appropriate. And I don't want their life to be ruled or limited by the inappropriate ones. And the same is true for all of us. So what's the difference between fear that helps us and fear that keeps us from doing what we love? Often, it's the difference between reality and thought. Did you know that merely thinking about something that scares you is enough to actually scare you? Even when you just think about being afraid, our bodies have a reaction like it's real. There's been studies where people were shown pictures of things they fear, and they actually have physical reactions, increased heart rate and sweating and other fear responses. If people respond like that to pieces of paper with pictures printed on them, imagine what happens when they encounter the real deal. Our bodies are programmed to do one of three things when we find ourselves in a fearful situation. Fight, flight, or freeze. What's your response? Are you a fighter? Or do you run away? Or are you like Mina? Do you just freeze? Do you ever find yourself afraid of something that never happened? Have you ever worried about something so much that fear kicks in, even though the thing you're worried about has never happened or occurred? The emergency state of fear brings out all kinds of stressful things that damage our body, that affect our decision making, that affect our ability to communicate with others and lessens our productivity. The fight, flight, or freeze response overrides our ability to be rational about things. When we are in a fear mode, it doesn't matter who tries to talk you out of it, you will have trouble hearing them. Fear is a real thing. I did a little unscientific poll this week uh, on Facebook. I asked people, what were you afraid of as a child? And boy, did I get a big response. Within 24 hours, um, I had over 100 responses. And the stories that you shared were very detailed. So obviously, these made huge impressions on you as children. And from what you posted there, um, there were lots of things in common between us. Lots of you were afraid of things being in your closet or under your bed, or you were afraid of the dark. Then spiders and sharks and snakes made lots of appearances, as did weather events like thunderstorms and hurricanes and tornadoes. And I have also discovered that I should never preach on the Wizard of Oz because lots of you are scared of the Wicked Witch and those little flying monkeys. Then there were bigger fears that people listed, things that have moved on into um, their adult lives. People fear things like failure, being alone, disappointing people, being rejected, losing control. If Buster Moon is right, 
fear keeps us from doing what we love. What the movie suggests to us is that when you and I withhold our gift, it is not only us who suffers, but all of us suffer. Mina had a voice that all needed to hear, but because her fear, she kept it inside of her. She wasn't the only one who suffered. We all missed out. When our gift is trapped inside of us, it is the world that longs to hear it, and we don't share it. Fear keeps things that need to be shared locked away. Fear hurts us all. And fear is certainly not God-honoring of the God-given gifts that he's given to each one of us, not for our own use, but to share with the world. Fear. Our culture seems to be captivated by it. And in the midst of an international pandemic, fear has been an ever-present reality. And then add on top of it the economy and people losing their jobs and terrorism and the unknowns of the new normal, let alone all the, the political unrest that has happened in our society. Fear paralyzes us. It keeps us from doing all sorts of things. And fear even seeps into the church when we wonder, how will we do ministry in these new times? Will people still come to church? How will we share the faith? What will our ministries and our missions look like? These fears are real and they can keep us from doing what we love. And how do I know that you're scared about it? Because I am too. I don't want to get this wrong. I don't want to make a mistake that causes people to get sick or even worse. So how do we not let the fear control us? Buster Moon is right. Fear does keep us from doing what we love. But how do we not let it? Finally, Buster looks at Mina and he says, you don't want to be scared anymore? Just start singing. Then what you are doing, when you're doing what you love, you won't be scared anymore. Who knew Buster Moon a little bow-tie-wearing koala bear could be a New Testament prophet. It's like he had heard the words out of 1 John chapter 4, verses 16 to 19. And so we know and rely on the love God has for us. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God in them. This is how love is made complete among us so that we will, all, we will have confidence on the day of judgment. In this world, we are like Jesus. There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. We love because God first loved us. Buster Moon could have been quoting from the scripture. Perfect love drives out fear. The only antidote to fear is love. That's why we need God and that's why we need the church. The community of faith should be a place that frees people of their fears. It is here that you will be surrounded by love no matter what. I think it's one of the reasons we've so missed getting together in person because we need people to surround us and encourage us. We need the church to help us deal with the fear that surrounds us now. If love, perfect love, casts out fear, then when you come to church, you should never be afraid. If you have a dream on your heart, then dream it. If you have a voice that needs to be heard, then speak or sing. If there is something you have always wanted to do, then this is the place to try it. This is the safe place filled with God's love and God's people's love. Proof positive is that they let me sing in the choir. Me, the fifth grade kid who had to go sit in the brown chairs 
I'm not great at singing, but I love doing it. And this is a place where I can. We need whatever gift you have. The world needs whatever God-given gift you've been given. Unleash your dream. Try something new. Explore your calling because you are loved. Be yourself in the community of believers. Share with us who you authentically are and know that you will be loved, first by God and then by God's people. Listen to the great prophet Buster Moon. Don't let fear keep you from doing what you love. Perfect love casts out fear. So for 10 years, I sat in the brown chairs, afraid to share my voice. It was not until I was in my 20s in college before I sang aloud with anyone in the room. How sad. I missed out. I wonder what kind of opportunities passed me by because I was too scared to do what I loved. At the end of the movie, Mina finds her voice and she faces her fears because she loves singing. And she is surrounded by people who love her. And so she steps out on the stage and she begins to sing. She's awesome. She's nervous. She's tentative at first. She's scared, but she steps on the stage and she just starts singing. And as she did what she loved, her fear diminished. Don't sit in the brown chairs anymore. Don't be like me. And so take the advice of Mina. Don't worry about a thing. Just do what you love. Be encouraged by the one who loves you. And don't let your fear keep you from doing and being all that God wants you to do and to be. In the name of the Father and the Son and God's Holy Spirit, will you pray with me? God, we thank you for all the gifts you've given to each of us. We pray, God, that you will remove the fears from us. Help us, God, to be your people in every way. God, help us to do what we love in your honor and to your glory. We ask in the name of Christ our Savior. Amen. in this life, so that those who haven't yet known it might find within you a warm and a generous friend. And may the love of God and the peace of Christ and the communion of God's Holy Spirit 
be with us today, tomorrow, and forevermore. Amen.